गुड इवनिंग डियर प्यूर एवी प्यूर यूरोलॉजी व्यूअर्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग दि सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स बट टूडे टॉपिक इज लिटिल डिफरेंट एक्चुअली दि लॉट ऑफ एम सी एच एंड डी एन बी यूरोलॉजिस्ट आर जॉइनिंग दिस मंथ और नेक्स्ट वीक सो कीपिंग दम इन व्यू we thought we will cover some of the basics uh, like mcug and rgu most of the urologists know how to do rgu how to do mcug it is not a uh, uh, very new thing but sometimes uh, we get confused in assessing the posterior lateral wall sometimes we miss the mcug film lateral view and oblique view in uh, diverticulum sometimes we miss the reflex in rgu interpretation uh, spasm of the membranous urethra versus a small stricture before membranous urethra uh, commenting on the posterior urethra is it possible or not these are all the things which are doubtful and sometimes we also get confused we ask radiologists what is there 99% of the times uh, urologists should be uh, enough experienced uh, after the mch and dab to comment however uh, those who does not have volumes of uh, stricture those who does not have volumes of reconstructive surgery this talk will be very useful today our speaker is uh, dr seshu mohan k who is uh, our junior in hyderabad and uh, he is practicing uh, more than uh four years five years in private practice in ashoda hospital so he is no more junior he is also colleague uh, consultant in the private practice and he has lot of uh, interest uh, from during his uh, from from his mch period he presented in the last uh, usicon also he presented a nice video in collaboration with uh, uh, dr surya prakash na bilateral uh, pyeloplasty flap repair in a harshu kidney simul uh, with a interval of one month that was a nice video selected for the usicon that shows his interest towards the academics and uh, briefly we will ask about his career and then introduce and then we will go his presentation because this presentation is not surgical technique uh, he wants to take time regarding the different uh, interpretations different pathological conditions different clinical pathological conditions how to interpret them so let us have a complete uh, uh, youtube link of uh, rju and mcug uh, um, uh, before we before we go to the introduction i want to announce that uh, lot of people are asking supine versus prone pcl next month conference uh, uh, small request is that it is a single day conference but before the day night uh, we have a, a cocktail dinner unofficially Uh, of course all the registered it is official but we are not announcing on the brochure those who are in hyderabad before the day that is on 5th sun uh, the saturday you can join cocktail dinner second thing we will demonstrate supine pcls uh, also minimum four cases uh, keep this in mind and the venue is near bhel that is uh, uh, near chandanagar Uh, any details you can ask uh, mr rajender or you can call me or you can mail us no problem sorry for this uh, interrupted announcement because this is next month lot of queries were there so it is primarily supine versus prone pcl one day before night we have gala dinner so dr seshu mohan uh, uh, good evening thank you for accepting the invitation for invitation yeah so seshu you i remember you did your uh, mch from usmania I did my loud for my MBBS in general surgery and MBBS in general surgery also with my medical college. Oh, that, that's great. So, uh, which batch MBBS you belongs to, Usmania? I'm 2003 batch of uh, Usmania Medical College, sir. 2003. That means uh, 12 years. You are junior. <laughs> good. Uh, you you are doing good job in the fast period. And MS, uh, uh, who was your boss in MS? Doctor Samreddy was my boss, sir. Yeah, Doctor Samreddy, sir. Yeah. so uh, he was also our teacher in mbbs because i did from usman mbbs and uh, who is, uh, who is uh, your uh, mch uh, professor dr dv jayaram red 
ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ Uh, we used to get more of reconstructive cases and open cases than laparoscopy so i am yeah, yeah. much interested in uh, 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 reconstructive urology especially sir you also do transplants now, along with sur prakash in private practice now yes sir yes sir we do transplants sir we do around uh, 150 transplants a year sir very good yes sir very good so even during my so with that uh, uh, yeah that's nice you are doing all varieties uh, the transplant everything Uh, even though uh, you are in private practice you have a lot of academic interest uh, please keep it up and uh, share the knowledge i hope you are in the pure group with this introduction uh, i will officially introduce uh, uh, sesh mohan on this uh, forum uh, video based surgical presentation on rgu mcug uh, by dr k sesh mohan he is working as consultant urologist at ashoda hospital hyderabad he has done his mbbs ms mch from prestigious in hyderabad this is the best institute usmania medical college which is my mbbs alumni also his areas of interest are uh, genital urinary reconstructive surgery men's urology health laparoscopic and kidney transplantation like any other private practitioner these are very important uh, things faculty and trainer in dnb urology program conducted rirs and trus biopsy hands on workshops cmes Uh, he has 20 posters and papers videos at various national international conferences 10 publications he got best poster in sogas 2017 for joint urinary calculus uh, best pre- poster prize at uh, south zone in 2021 bilateral renal buccal mycosis promising as uh, presenting as anuria presented poster at siu 2021 dubai recently pedicle prepucial tube erythroplasty for bulbar urethral necrosis Uh, good uh, you have a lot of interest in academics so like keep it up and over to you sesh mokan uh, please uh, take time and uh, explain and if you have rare things uh, we can skip at the end but uh, you take your time no problem okay. over to you already to, already 68 audience are there because it's an interesting topic thank you sir thank you for the introduction and kind words uh, so especially uh, thank you all the viewers and this is a, i mean special deviation from Uh, your voice is breaking if you if you use without uh, microphone also okay yes sir okay so as this is the topic is especially uh, designed for the post graduates because many of the post graduates don't have much of uh, experience or much of exposure in the field of reconstructive urology and especially with rg mcug so whereas the uh, technique is basically different different radiologists do dif- differently so there is some confusion regarding where how to do mcug how to do rgu and all the procedures went to do how to interpret rgu what is correct rgu what is correct incorrect rgu what is uh, correctly done mcug so all this needs to be understood so for this reason i decided to make this talk in a more detailed form so that the post graduates will get benefited and i request all the seniors and the experts in the recurrent urologists to bear with me and they can add any points which i missed so i'll start with uh, i have taken the consent from the volunteer who are help me in making the video for this presentation and i have taken the consent from the patient also regarding the usage of the rg mcg films and there is no financial support in this powerpoint presentation and i have taken few of the images from the standard urology and uroradiology textbooks also so take glance i'm going to discuss regarding introduction what are the equipment required for the studies now how what is the correct technique of rg mcg what are the normal variants and regarding scout film what is the importance of scout film and what is the importance of other films in the study and examples different examples and exercises of rg mcug what are the guidelines saying regarding the rg mcug studies and finally take home message so introduction as we know the conventional radiography of lower unit tract includes mcug rgu and cystography so i'll be discussing regarding what is only the relevant anatomy which is related to this talk so the discussion of their anatomy is different based on the urologist and anatomist anatomist they don't agree this uh, there is a like classification like anterior urethra posterior urethra recently they have tell that there is no division like anterior urethra posterior urethra urethra is broadly divided into six segments so for our purpose and for our knowledge the urethra is basically divided into two segments based on the urogenital diaphragm 
the urethra which is distal to urogenital diaphragm is anterior urethra which is proximal to is posterior urethra again anterior urethra is divided into uh, fossa navicularis are glans penile urethra and bulbar urethra whereas the posterior urethra is divided into bladder neck and prostate and membranous urethra this classification is important because all my studies and my topic is and the presentation is based on this anatomical classification only so these are the important like they just see here the small dot like openings here these are nothing but openings of bulb uh, periurethral glands of litter these are very important because in case of bulbar urethral structures they will become prominent you can see even in rg also so this is diagram which is showing bladder neck prostate urethra membranous urethra bladder neck and this is urogenital diaphragm this is penile urethra this is fossa navicularis so the important point what i would like to highlight here is this is what is known as urogenital diaphragm so many of the anatomists they will not agree ki there is in structure like urogenital diaphragm is existing so the because for our knowledge and for ba because based on the urogenital diaphragm only we classify our urethral injuries as well so i like to highlight here a little thing regarding the urogenital diaphragm here the urogenital diaphragm this is the area which is attached both sides to the pelvic bone and it is like it will have two layers that is superior fascia and inferior fascia the inferior fascia which you can see here is nothing but also known as perineal membrane or it is also known as triangular ligament which we used to call previously so the triangular ligament or perineal membrane or urogenital diaphragm are almost the same the space between these two membrane fascia of the urogenital diaphragm is known as deep perineal space this deep perineal space will contain membranous urethra external sphincter and bulbourethral glands whereas the bulbourethral gland bulbourethral gland with their duct they will open in bulbar urethra so this anatomy is important as our complete talk is based on these images only this again i would like to highlight here this is superior layer of urogenital diaphragm this is inferior layer of urogenital diaphragm the space this is nothing but urogenital diaphragm the inferior fascia fascia of urogenital diaphragm is also known as perineal membrane or triangular ligament so which is an important landmark this is there are two ligaments that is this is fundiform ligament this is falciform ligament and because of these falciform ligament and this urogenital diaphragm urethra is take the form of an s here these are the important muscles which are important in uh they can i mean urethral surgery this is ischio cavernosus this is bulbo cavernosus and this is attachment ischio cavernosus extension onto the bulbo cavernosus this is what is uh, responsible for sometimes like muscular compressor nudis because of the indentation of this muscle only sometimes so this is normal uh, urethra i mean anatomy of urethra is seen in as in seen in rgu this is penile urethra this is bulbar urethra you can see the bulbo urethral duct inserting here this is bulbo urethral duct so this is bulbar urethral gland so this is uh, coning of the bulbar urethra here and this is the muscular compressor nudo here this landmark and this oval filling defect here what you see here this is verum montanum and this is bladder neck okay and how will you know that the, there is a um, membranous urethra is started the important landmark to delineate the membranous urethra in difficult cases is the lower margin of obturator foramen the line joining the two obturator foramen straight line this will guide us to the bulbo membranous junction remember this point whenever there is a difficulty in identifying membranous urethra in rgu the line joining the inferior margin of both obturator foramen will give us rise to the it will indicate bulbo membranous junction this is pelvic regarding pelvic fractures the important and we, we need to understand that pelvis some of the main components of pelvic bone basically pelvic bone is com uh, comprised of three, three components that is this is ilium this is ischium sorry this is ischium and this is pubis so ilium this is uh, ilium is in uh, joining with the uh, sacrum you can see this is sacrum bone with sacral ala and this is coccyx this is sacroiliac joint which can be disrupted in pelvic fractures this is iliac wing which can also be fractured this is superior pubic ramae this is inferior pubic ramae this is pubic symphysis pubic tubercle and this is pubic arch this is obturator foramen this is ischial tuberosity and this is ischial spine and this is pelvic ring this whole thing is pelvic ring why this image is important because unless there is pelvic ring disruption these injuries will not uh, injure the urethra okay unless there is injury of the superior pubic ramae or inferior pubic ramae these injuries will not disrupt the membranous urethra so is already explained this is pelvic inlet or pelvic ring here so this is pelvic ring which is formed by all the bones so pelvic bone reception is mandatory for the urethra to get injured 
This is normal anatomy, what we see in the X-ray KUB. So here we can see the shadow of the bladder, shadow of the penis here. This is iliac bone. The whole thing is sacrum. You can see here sacrum. This is sacroiliac joint. This is sacroiliac joint, iliac wing here. This is iliopectineal line. This is obturator foramen. This is ischial tuberosity, superior pubic rami, inferior pubic rami, and this is acetabulum. So this anatomy, having this knowledge regarding this anatomy is important because during traumatic, uh, I mean, during, uh, during uh, uh, RG MCUs in trauma cases, we need to know what is the normal anatomy, what is the normal bone. Then only we can classify what bone has injured. So this is a diagram which is showing the importance relation between the colis fascia, bux fascia, and to fascia later. Because this has important implication because in traumatic cases, for suppose if you think penel fracture, if the bux fascia is, in, bux fascia is intact, then the extravasation is confined to only penis. Whereas if the bux fascia is stayed, if it gets injured, then the extravasation can extend to anterior abdominal wall or into the scrotum. Seshmohan, Seshmohan, go, go little slow, no problem, don't worry. This is a, a private program, you need not worry. Okay. We will not uh, block or there is no time limit. Let it be a good presentation because later on also people will see. Those who are interested will see it. So this perineal diaphragm is very useful for juniors. Uh, whatever the yellow line, you explain slowly, please. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So the thing is, the important anatomical landmarks here is Bux fascia, police fascia, and urogenital diaphragm. We need to understand these three things. Okay, the Bux fascia, is, as we all know, it will cover the corpus cavernosum, corpus spongiosum. Whereas in case of pineal injury or anterior injury, if the Bux fascia is intact, then the extravasation will be confined only to the pineal uh, surface only. It will not go into the uh, superficial perineal pouch area. Okay, if suppose if there is extra the disruption of the bux fascia. Usually is, bux fascia will be disrupted in injuries, na? Usually. This is penile, regarding penile fracture, sir, especially in case of penile fracture. Okay. Cases. Uh, when so, we get mean, large hematoma after penis fracture, it means bux fascia is uh, broken? Yes, no, it be based on the extra, if, if it is only eggplant deformity, then it is confined to not, uh, I mean, uh, injured the bux fascia, sir. Okay. So, if based if it is going to suprapubic region and scrotum, that means uh, uh, injury, is, has injury has disrupted the bux fascia. Yes, sir. Injury has disrupted the bux fascia. So, the important oh, yeah. is, okay. if the injury has disrupted the bux fascia and the urogenital diaphragm is intact, that means the extravasation will not go into the extra peritoneal space around the bladder. Otherwise, there also it will go. There also it will go unless there is urogenital diaphragm is disrupted, then only it will go into this area, sir. Okay. So if urogenital is... diaphragm is disrupted and if bladder neck is intact, still the still the extravasation blood and can go uh, in the extra peritoneum. Yes, yes, it can go even if the, for suppose if the urogenital diaphragm here is disrupted. Yeah. And also based on the attachment, based on only the, the injuries involving only the urogenital diaphragm or it will also involve the urethra. If it is involved ah. the corpus spongiosum or bulbar urethra and already bux fascia around the corpus spongiosum is injured, then ah. the extravasation will be around the bladder, surrounding the bladder, extrapetonal space and it may come here or here also. Okay. So it has disrupted okay. the urogenital diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But whereas in case so, of... The urogenital diaphragm disruption is a very severe injury. Sir, yes, sir. So, urethral diaphragm yes. injury, uh, based on that only, we'll classify urethral injuries, as we all yes, know. Yes, sir. Very so good. I highlight this image because everything is based on this image only. Okay. So Anti-urethral injury, if the bux fascia is intact, extravasation is different. If the bux fascia is injured, extravasation is different. If the urethral diaphragm is also injured, then the extravasation is different. It's totally different. Excellent. Excellent. Whereas in case of, this is butterfly, butterfly hematoma, as we all know, but the thing is, for the butterfly hematoma to form, it will take around one to two days. But in majority of the cases, when the pelvic fracture or the urethral injury occur, patient will present within one to two hours. So may not be all the, this may not be, we should not wait till the butterfly hematoma to wait. We should have a suspicion whether the, the patient is not able to void when there is blood at the meatus, irrespective of the, whether all these signs are present or not, we should doubt the urethral injury and we should evaluate for the urethral injuries. Because uh, this will take one to two days time. So we cannot tell that if there is no butterfly hematoma, so there, there is not uh, urethral injury or there is no penile edema, there is no pelvic fracture, so we cannot tell. Based on the blooded meter is the most important sign which will tell whether the urethra is injured or not. 
So this is important diagram. So, so, I, as I told you, the extravasation will extend upwards to what level? It will extend up to the level of clavicle also because all this is a part of superficial fascia of abdomen. Downwards, it will extend and it will attach at the level of this. This is what is, uh, this is attachment of, here it is attached to fascia lot of lat of thigh. That means the extravasation will never go beyond this point. That means it will not go beyond the level of fascia lata into the thigh. At the same time, it will not go beyond the level of clavicle. It will not go into the head and neck because it is fixed here with the help of with the clavicle. But it is very important to know where is the extravasation occurring and what are the landmarks. This, this is important diagram. This is straddle injury. This has already discussed straddle injury. That means the urethra is bulbar urethra is crushed against something like it is, it can be because of a cycling injury. Because of a cycling injury or a manhole injury, anything. When the bulbar urethra is crushed, it will be crushed against the foreign body. That means the metal or whatever the object and symphysis pubis. It is crushed. So based on the severity of the injury, there are different types of injuries occur. The injury severity is less, then there will it will form less severe injury. That means they will present later. So the strictures will develop slowly. If the severity of injury force of impact is severe, then it will crush and it will damage the complete urethra transaction can also occur. Yes. So this is important. Previously, it was thought that the level of uh, disruption in case of pelvic fracture urethral injuries at the level of bulbo prostatic junction. But now it is clear that it is level of uh, transaction or level of disruption is at the level of bulbo membranous junction. So this is here, this is the newer concept. It is at the level of bulbo membranous junction with some amount of membranous urethra is intact here. These are the older thought where it was thought that uh, urethra is disrupting at the level of prostatic urethra. So we can explain the uh, the example like the, when we are plucking apple from its stem. Similarly, the injury is occurring in case of membranous urethral disruption. This is like prostate and this is like stem. That means remaining of the bulbar urethra because bulbar urethra is fixed here at the level of perineal uh, triangular ligament here it is fixed. Whereas membranous urethra is the only part which is not supported by any structure. Prostatic urethra is supported by prostate whereas the bulbar urethra is supported by the bulbospongius muscle. At the level of urogenital diaphragm, membranous urethra does not have any support. That means it is disrupted when the force is applied from above, when pubic ligaments are disrupted or when the pubic sympathy is disrupted, the urethra is plucked from the level of bulbo, bulbo membranous junction. This is what uh, important bulbo, membra uh, bulbo membranous junction means below the urogenital diaphragm, it is plucked out or above urogenital diaphragm? Below, sir, that means at the inferior level of of urogenital diaphragm that is perineal membrane or triangular ligament level which is it classically happens uh, during straddle injury or what type of injury this happens this is pelvic fracture urethral injuries sir posterior urethral injuries this is not the straddle injuries anterior urethral injuries anterior urethral injuries, injuries which can involve only the bulbar urethra yeah Perineal urethra is usually supported because all this perineal, uh, per it is covered, so it is not usually injured. Perineal urethra is injured mostly in cases of penetrating injury, gunshot injuries or stab injuries or like in case of perineal fracture, whereas bulbar urethra is injured in case of straddle injury, whereas the posterior urethra is disturbed, I mean distracted because of the pelvic fracture. Hence, it is previously known as pelvic fracture urethral distraction defect, but distraction is not always required, so hence the terminology changed to pelvic fracture urethral injuries now. Pelvic fracture urethral injuries. injuries. Now, distraction is not always mandatory. So it is even push urethral minimal disruption without uh, complete disruption of the membrana, pie in the sky, pie in the bladder, all these are not necessary always. That's, that's why the terminology has changed it from distraction defect to pelvic fracture urethral injuries. Very good point. Right. So, after this, I'll discuss some of the technical aspects of what is the equipment which is required to do the study like RG, MCUG. As with, I will not uh, stress the point, uh, some of the points. The important point which we need to remember is we need to have an it should be done under aseptic precautions so that the infection chance is less. It should be sterilely draped and we should have all the equipment at our place and we should have a clarity what investigation we are going to have and we should know what are the films we are going to order. So because for RGU, three to four images are sufficient, but for MCUG, around 10 to 12 films are required. So we should have a clarity, what are the films we are going, we are going to order and what are the films which are required as per the study and as per the indication for the patient. Then what are all the things required is for antiseptic pre preparation, betadine or powdered powder iodine or any other alcohol-based solution, you need to have sterile gloves, irrigation drip, 
and 100 to 300 ml of ns and contrast agents lead apron and lead gloves what are the contrast agents commonly we use i will not go into details but i like to highlight only two points there are the two types of contrast agents which we commonly use in urology practice one is iohexal which is also known as omnipec in india it is nothing but it is a non ionic low osmolar contrast agent it will have a low side effects even if it gets intravasated into the circulation this is what is used in ivp and in ct scan images it will have based on the iodine content it will it will available as 140 180 240 300 350 for majority of the urology cases we use omnipec 300 the other one is urographin also known as tazograph so this is nothing but it is a uh, combination of ditrazoic acid with its sodium and meglumin salt so i will not go into the details but it is available in different concentration like 60% 66% 76% so we commonly use 76% what is this 76% means it will have the component of it is have a combination of meglumin salt and sodium salt why these salts are important because meglumin salts have some positive and some negatives sodium salts have some positive some negative some negatives so for this reason opacification is better with sodium salt but it will have cns side effects opacification is less with meglumin salt but it will have bronchial side effects so that's for this reason we need we will add both this component into diff different mixture so that it will be made into a urographin so but this is ionic uh, contrast agent urographin and it is a high osmolar agent if if it gets into circulation the chance of contrast reaction will increase so what are the types of rgu as we all know rgu can be done in two types that is one is dynamic and second one is static so what is dynamic dynamic means the film is exposed dynamic means what we do under fluoroscopy that means under fluoroscopy guidance will continuously monitoring the imaging that is dynamic rgu what is static rgu static rgu means that is what we do under x ray uh, machine that means we are not here doing we continuous screening is not done here we'll give injection we'll take one film we'll turn the patient into oblique position we'll take one film this is what is static rgu and the, what is auto urethrography auto urethrography means patient by himself he will inject the contrast agents why this is developed by some because while we are giving contrast media the patient will be under stress we may not be we, if we are giving it uh, giving it under speed patient uh, sphincter will go into spasm patient will have discomfort and the study will not be complete for this reason we will ask the patient to give contrast by himself once the patient gives by himself he will be relaxed he know what to give then the sphincter will not go into spasm and the study will be better this is what is known as auto urethrography and other thing is pericatheter rgu as we all know we used to do in case of urethroplasty at the time of removal of catheter even we can also do in cases of um, uh, radical prostatectomy after removal of, at the time of removal of catheter if you have any doubt of contravis extravasation so what is sir so what is, is recommended uh, pericatheter rgu nowadays for stricture urethra post urethroplasty not now na Yes, sir. It is in uh, EAU guidelines 2021. They made as a strong recommendation, sir. Better to do uh, pericat RG in doubtful cases. So they have made it a strong. Doubtful cases, not all cases. Doubtful not cases. Not all cases. Preferable not all cases, sir. But it is given as a. Strong We are doing it, sir. But recently, Sanjay Kulkarni sir told that they are not doing. They are removing catheter after four day, four weeks. Sir. So we got confused now whether to do pericat RG or not. Based, in, based on the and the level of our anastomosis, sir. If you are confident about the anastomosis, no need to do it. If yeah, are, we are always confident when we do the surgery. <laughs> no, sir. It, it also depends on the patient factor. Also, sir, if it is a redo surgery, if it is a complex, yeah, yeah. Surgery, all these factors also matter. Diabetic infection, something like that. If it is there, we will do it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, then, uh, how can the patient uh, patient self urethrogram? Uh, How can he inject when the penis is not straight and it is it will how can he inject like any idea like yes, it is a good thought but uh, pra practically it is difficult na no it possible sir the thing is even for like RGU we place the place the portion uh, patient into the right oblique position or left oblique position based on the surgeon's preference and we'll put a Foley catheter we'll inflate the bulb to one to two uh, ml into the fossa navi claris with okay little traction with little okay. traction what we can do is we can strap the Foley over his thigh. and okay we, we give the syringe to the patient so that he will inject by himself okay okay but will not got it got it good 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 got it so what is then are the type is choke cysto urethrography that means choke means we have to compressing that means during our, during mcug we all know that mcug will delineate the posterior urethra better but if we want to see the anterior urethra in mcug then we have to block it at the level of meatus with the help of hand or with the help of penile clamps that there will so that there will be the anterior urethra will get distended 
this is the concept behind chokes historiography but this is practically difficult because the clamping his meters everything and glands is uh, practically not possible in all cases then what is anti grade urethrography anti grade urethrography means what the urethrography is usually it is a retrograde that means we can we give contrast from meters to bladder level in anti grade urethrography that means urethrography urethra is studied anti gradely that means as a part of uh, ibu or, or as a part of mcug so the other type of rgu is double balloon rgu that is positive pressure rgu which can be done in case of urethrovaginal fistula and urethral diverticulum cases with the help of double balloon catheter that is tratner's catheter so what is other type of rgu is opposing urethrogram that is up and downogram which we commonly do in pelvic fracture urethral injury cases evaluation so this is uh, importance of uh, up and downogram this is simultaneous rg mcug which will showing this long gap is there between the urethral ends but when we do flexible scopy from above the gap is less this is the importance of doing up and downogram so what are the indications i will not going to discuss, discuss because as rg especially to delineate the anti urethra and its problems the what are the contraindications for rg that means especially acute urinary tract infection is a absolute contraindication so what are the contrast i already discussed the contrast medium the, what are the different methods to give contrast media there are the these are the equipment which are different to give the contrast and which will prevent the contrast leak so the, how we can give the contrast what we commonly use is foley catheter and what are the other uh, uh, i mean uh, equipment available are scalp set vein infant feeding tube angio catheter brodnis clamp nutson clamp and iv cannula sheath also we can use and even in difficult cases like bxo cases where the meatus is difficult to cannulate then we can even we can use urethroscope or pediatric cystoscope and from this we can give contrast to do the rg study and there are other methods like new methods that i'll discuss later so there are other methods to prevent the while we are giving the contrast some amount of contrast will come out so what are the methods to prevent the contrast leak one is with the help of fingers we can occlude the uh, glands that is what commonly many people will do or with the help of gauze keys they will tie and they will do foley occlusion catheter and the brodney and nutson clamp they are helpful especially in these cases so this is what we commonly do in our practice we do uh, with the help of gauze piece we tie the glands so that the contrast will not come out with the help of cone tip catheter or butterfly catheter we give the contrast this is what is simultaneous mcug and rgu and this is contrast giving with the help of iv cannula sheath there are this is uh, peri catheter rgu doing with the help of angio catheter these are the devices which are devices uh, developed for the study uh, like rgu these are brodnis clamp this is nutson's clamp they have the supporting mechanism that means they will support the glands they will prevent the leakage of the contrast as well as they will have the facility for the contrast to be given in brodnis clamp contrast will be given given from this whereas in case of nutson's clamp contrast can be given from here what are the other methods of uh, this occlusion catheter this is penel clamp that is developed by hutton and there is a barcelona technique of rgu which is developed in the barcelona so this is uh, uh, developed by, they used uh, uterine uh, cannulas which will be used for histosalpingography for these cannulas they developed desh uh, mohan uh, uh, what will you, you you use normally when you do we use foley catheter or scalp set vein sir scalp set vein or foley's foley catheter sir we use foley, foley catheter. catheter do inflate the balloon or not small amount we inflate 1 to 2 ml sir after that you hold the you yes. stretch and uh, laterally you put and take it out yes, sir. Yes, sir. i'll tell this at the time of i mean the procedure sir oh. these are only clamps different methods sir. right 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 so this is other method they had recently developed that is berna clamp method for doing rgu and the procedure of rg mcg i i want to explain with the help uh, yes. very good you have taken a video this is like a patient is lying here this is x ray beam so we want, we have to adjust based on our study the light is coming this is x ray beam we have to adjust based on the collimation we have to adjust what length we require and what breadth we require you can see it again so that we have we should have a clarity so that we will avoid over exposure this is x ray tube and this is collimator from where the x ray is coming and we'll keep the patient patient is lying supine so with this we can we can change the transverse and longitudinal diameter of the x ray film and exposure we can 
change with the help of this adjustments very good what x ray you are using we have it we have center we have digital x ray sir siemens or something siemens sir siemens we are using siemens, siemens is known this is x ray plate uh, which can be adjusted based on the patient position which can be adjusted here fine view see gave the and this is what the position for rgu in right lateral right oblique position how to uh, keep the patient into right oblique position here we can see the video yes pelvis is tilted 20 to 45 degrees and the lower leg that is this dependent leg is tilted to 40 to 40, 45 to 90 degrees and the upper leg should be straight This is what a standard position for RG. This is for the left oblique position. Similarly, the pelvis tilt should be there, and the dependent knee should be flexed. These are the two important thing structure tips to prevent overlapping of urethra. And for MCUG. Uh, is that many of the uh, male patient they cannot walk in supine po uh, supine position? It is better to do the MCU in standing position. So for this, the X-ray beam has to be changed like this, as shown in this. Patient should be standing, and we can transfer the X-ray beam or X-ray cube like this. So this is. So, it, 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 Patient is standing and the beam is transferred. But this standing position is required for MCUG, sir. MCUG, you are telling. Okay. For for female and for children, they can do MCUG in uh, supine. Uh, but for males, it is physiological to stand and void, so it is always better to do MCUG in uh, standing position, sir. Very good. This is in uh, MCUG. It is right oblique, right anterior oblique position, and left anterior oblique position. This uh, for the demonstration sake, I uh, labeled it as RAO and LAO. Right anterior oblique. That means right leg is anterior. Okay. So left leg is straight. That means this is right anterior oblique position. Here it is left oblique position because left leg is straight. Right leg is forward. So the position, as already discussed, this is what the uh, classical diagram which we found everywhere for the proper positioning of RGU. Pelvis should be tilted to 20 to 45 degrees, and the bottom hip should be flexed to 45 degrees. So this will prevent the overlapping of urethra. And how will you know that the patient position is proper? The lower leg, the lower leg obturator foramen should not be visible in RGU. That means in the plain film. The obturator foramen of this leg should not be visible. It should be uh, blocked. Then only it is a properly done RGU. So, what are the limitations of uh, RGU? Because it, sometimes it will be difficult to assess the fossa navicular structure and uh, meatal structures, and it is difficult to assess the membranous urethral structure as well in case of uh, with RGU. And the RGU is a two-dimensional image only, so it is difficult to assess spongiofibrosis. it will be based on confounding factors like patient position penis stretch uh, whether the patient is obese or not all this factor will influence the rgu and there are some risks associated with it and the one important concept of uh, limitation of rgu is there is a paradoxical dilatation what is this paradoxical dilatation means above the level of stricture that means proximal to the level of stricture with the chronically uh, obstructed system there will be dilatation will be seen that means if the stricture is at the level of proximal bulbar urethra If the stricture is of long duration, we may see the dilatation of membranous urethra also because of the constant pressure from the above. So this is paradoxical dilatation. What is the importance of this paradoxical dilatation? Means during surgery, if you involve only the obstructed part, that is, if you only involve the narrow part, there are chances that this dilated part may also get involved later on. That is, that is why it is important to know the urethra which is beyond the level of stricture also. That is why it is always better to combine RGU with MCUG. so because with mcug we can know what is the urethra which is proximal to stricture with rg we can know what is the level of the what is the, what is the status of the urethra which is distal to the level of stricture and rg exposes to 1 to 2 millisieverts of radiation which is almost 20 times the x ray radiation to chest x ray and as we all know bladder filling in any of the case rg mcg it may lead to adenomyositis reflexia in in some cases 
this is the important diagram which will i like to highlight here is as we all know rgu will always underestimate the structure length why the, the explanation for this is just you see this image the patient will be tilted and in lateral position and the penis is stretched the penile urethra is straight but you see here actual the penile bulbar urethra length is 4 cm because it is stretched and it is in oblique position but the x ray beam will not be oblique it will be straight only so it will be coming from like this urethra is like this oblique but x ray is coming like this that means it will show it as less than 4 cm it will not always show the length so this is the reason why many of the times strictures will be underestimated with the rgu so excellent point I, 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 this is very very important point so it is said that in the, uh, the percentage is 37% almost 37 to 40% of the times rg will underestimate and it will underestimate the length by 37% that means 37% of the length it will show less in study okay so what is then you uh, said that rg x ray takes two times or three times of the normal chest x ray why so it is based on the radiation sir because chest x ray as compared to because large larger area is exposed here because for rg we need to have plain film sometimes we need to see the kidney level also from level of urethra also we have to see from the level of uh, level of pelvis we need to see the bladder external genitalia and urethra also the area of exposure is more than the chest x ray okay so based on the level of exposure the radiation will differ right right got the point static cystography is nothing but is a, it can be a part of mcug or it can be a separately done procedure that means cystography means only to study the bladder so it can be a part of ivp it can be a part of uh, cyst mcug or it can be isolated in case of bladder injuries so coming to the mcug it can be done by two ways one is with the help of fluoroscopy with iodine contrast media or it can be done with the help of nuclear scintigraphy also it can be done but we are discussing only mcug here so indications as we all know mcug especially done especially in cases for uh, in cases to study urethral uh, pathology like posterior urethral valves and uh, vesicular urethral reflex and to study the posterior urethra and in case of uh, we video urodynamic studies also we use mcug contraindication acute infection is contraindication contraindication to any study there are different formulas available for the bladder especially in case of children we all know those formulas and in mcug the important points is uh, in mcug first we have to take plain film what is the importance of plain film that means we have to see is there any stones are there in the, the level of kidney or not why it is important because during reflex if there is a reflex if we don't have the kidney shadow i mean kidney image in the plain film if there is already stone is not there we don't know whether this uh, reflex contrast material in the kidney whether it is because of stone or because of reflex of contrast material that's why in mcug it's always better to have the plain film covering the area of kidney also but whereas in case of rgu plain film does not involve kidney area it will if it involve the bladder area that is sufficient whereas we have to see the reflex here it is always mandatory to have the level of plain film should be covered to the level of kidneys and oblique films and we all know during filling what we know what we want in mcug one plain film one early filling film and the full bladder film and the voiding film in the right oblique position left oblique position if required in lateral position post void film and delayed post void film these are the films which are usually required in case of mcug so what is the importance of early filling uh, film early filling film will tell whether the catheter is in place or not that is first thing second thing as we all know ureter seal will better delineated when the when the bladder is partially filled so ureter seals are better seen in early filling phases in some di some diverticula will also be seen in cases of early filling phase then what are the lateral films or oblique films will tell oblique films will tell about whether the whether it will tell about the uh, reflex it will tell about the ureter seal it will tell about the posterior urethra it will tell about anterior urethra and it will tell about the diverticula also even if there is reflex is there we have to see whether reflex into the one kidney reflex into the both kidneys what is the extent of the reflex what is the classification of this reflex is there any intrauterine reflex is there or not reflex involving the lower ureter or upper ureter also and is there any duplex system is there or not all this information we should see in voiding films and even voiding we have to see what is the urethral status posterior urethra whether it is dilated showing spinning top deformity or not posterior urethral valves are there or not all this information is important why post void films are important that means we should see in post void films 10% of the bladder injury cases will be picked up in uh, post void films only that means complete after complete the contrast is gone we can see extravasation of contrast surrounding the bladder level 
what is the important is second important thing is in post void films if there is a reflex we have to see whether the ureter are completely drained or not this is also important to see that will have a important practical implication if we are suspecting the cyclic mcug is a, is a type of mcug when we are suspecting uh, reflex but we are not able to delay, define the uh, reflex in mcug in those cases we have to repeat the cycle that means we have to same repeat the cycle two to three times in the same sitting to see the reflex this is known as cyclical mcug what is the other type of mcug that is pic histogram as we all know pic histogram means positional installation of contrast uh, histography this is done in operation theater uh, under with help of cystoscopy so we will with the, we keep the cystoscopy just in front of the uh, in front of the ureteric orifice but it should not be on to the ureteric orifice it should be just in front of the ureteric orifice and then we have to give the contrast directly on to the orifice it will give it will detect the reflexes which are occult which are clinically significant but which are not picked up by the conventional mcug pic histogram will pick up these cases the reflex which is detected by pic histogram is known as pic vur so oh, this is cyclical vcug one example whereas the, this is after the first voiding study there there is no reflex but we have sus strong suspicion of reflex then we have repeated the second cycle during the second cycle there is reflex into the right kidney during the third cycle there is reflex into the both the kidneys this is what the importance of cyclical mcug in some cases so what are the types of mcug one is stress histogram stress histogram means to delineate better the urethral uh, bladder injuries we should inject the bladder and we should fill it over distended so that the contrast will slowly extravasate this is what is known as stress histography the other type is expression histogram that means expression histogram is histogram doing under anesthesia once the bladder is full as the patient cannot void we have to give compression with the hand or with the help of wooden block this is expression histogram what is excretion mcu that means as a part of avp after avp once the bladder is full we ask the patient to void this is excretion mcug choke i already discussed direct means during uh, with retrogradely we give contrast ask the patient to void this is direct mcug what is indirect mcug indirect means after ivp that is excretion mcug is also known as indirect mcug so procedure i already discussed the important point here i like to highlight highlight is in case of mcug it is always mandatory to see the level of the catheter where it is placed because there are some instances where catheter can be placed in the ectopic ureter like in this case or it can be coiled like this in case of post urethral valve or if excessive catheter, catheter is placed inside the bladder it may get knotting knotting also this is all these are important so that's why we have to see whether the catheter is properly placed or not how we know that it is properly placed or not catheter which is not in the midline that means it is not properly placed catheter complication as we all know there are, this is what important point which many of the examiners will ask in exam that is during mcug bladder neck is not opening what are the reasons and what will you do what are the reasons for the mcu bladder neck which is not opening during mcug one is bladder neck contracture prostatic uh, fibrosis or prostatic necrosis urethral distractions scarred uh, bladder neck and uh, during underactive detrusor or some neurological pelvic neuroplexus injury in those cases bladder neck will not get open and in most commonly it is because of psychological inhibition to void because of the certain you, you might have kept the sixth one as first one <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> because we all uh, uh, feel unhappy not to see the urethra especially in trauma because uh, level of the uh, as, as you said flexible uh, uh, scopy may be required is, uh, are you telling any measures to open the bladder neck while doing study alpha blockers anything useful or Light yes, sedation yes, or pressing abdomen. You are telling that. Yes, sir. Here I am telling what to do next year only, sir. What to do? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Major sir is want to fill the bladder beyond his capacity so that he will have a sensation. He will make his into void and open any water tap or a water faucet. Third one is play some music which is favorite for the patient. Turn off the room's lights and place the patient in standing position, which will make patient physiological and he may void this time. and if the patient is already a known case of bph give him alpha blocker which will help him to have and in some cases if the patient is anxious giving a prior night giving a dose of propranolol or diazepam will help all these are helpful so what are the limitations of mcug as we all know mcug cannot define the anterior urethra so we cannot know the urethra which is distant to the level of obstruction multiple films are required in mcug that means there are multiple radiation dose especially in case of children it is was a disadvantage with mcug hence many people they will do radionuclide cystography in the follow up of reimplanted cases 
so this requires bladder filling and it may be traumatic in children especially in children and it may induce some spasms and autonomic dysreflexia also so then after this briefing then we'll go to the interpretation of rg mcug so as we know the basic concepts i would like to go a little speed here because we have known the basics of rg mcug so what are the normal variants and what is normally done rgu and mcug here you can see the image in all the four images in all the four images all these are right oblique position how we are telling these are right oblique position that means you can see the right femur here that means hip is right hip is flexed so all these four images are right oblique position images number 1 you know how i repeat repeat how it is right side that yeah, it is how it is right side means there are two clues sir, here in given any x ray one is we have to see which femur is visible so right okay. femur is visible which femur can cannot be left femur so usually we should not expose the left femur this is what an ideal uh, mcug sir if the opposite femur is seen that means it is over exposed to film in rgu especially in rgu because in rgu our study is to see the urethra only not to see the femur bladder and reflex so this is the right femur you are telling sir okay this is, right. this is, this is, sir. This okay. is right femur one second clue is you can see the soft tissue shadow here that means penile shadow here you can see penile okay. on to the thigh yeah okay on to the right thigh this is the second clue we have to tell with is the right side film or left side film third clue is when the hip is flexed to 45 degrees as already told you the ipsilateral obturator foramen will not be visible here you can see the left obturator foramen here you can see the left obturator foramen here left obturator foramen left obturator foramen but we cannot see the right obturator foramen these Excellent. clues will tell whether it is right sided procedure or left sided procedure by looking Excellent. at this only we have we can see and one more clue is we can see here the image urethra is towards the patient right side the overall view it is towards patient right side if it is a left side urethra will be like this opposite side mirror image so okay okay no problem we can know and this is we can see this is perineal urethra bulbar urethra and we already told the filling defect which is seen here is veru montanum and the lower lower margin of obturator foramen will tell us about bulbo membranous junction that means starting of membranous urethra this is what One is common question in this position plain x ray is not taken okay or not plain x ray we have to take sir but the thing is we to avoid because in this uh, veru region if a stone is there sir. normally in private practice in 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 institutions when you are training more of trauma you see but in private practice when the patient comes with difficulty in avoiding pain we think stone also if you take normal x ray qb it is missed so sometimes we take in oblique same position you will see just above the pubic symphysis one shadow so we suspect stone uh, when especially ultrasound gives some clue so if you are doing rgu is it recommended to take a normal x ray before always even even if for rgu or mcug plain x ray is mandatory sir without plain in the, in the same position or straight position same position is not required sir for same position if you want to see one is to as you said calculate second one is if you want to sure about the proper position then we can take an rgu then we can take a plain filling to see that the urethra will not be delineated but we want to see just the bone is properly placed hip is properly flexed or not to see that only we may require but it is unnecessarily a study if your properly position is fixed and properly the right i mean properly the dependent thigh is flexed that means majority of the times it will be correct but we can take sir yeah yeah nice okay. yes. so uh, this this all examples are to show that this is a what is a properly done rgu see same thing see this is a left sided procedure because left hip is patient left hip is visible here left obturator foramen is not seen here right obturator foramen is seen here the right femur should not be seen but it's, it's okay and this is this is wrong because the patient and the examiner examiner or the technician hand should not come this is what is this should not be come actually so then we then i'll come i'll give some examples of what is not properly done rgu this is an example of which is not properly done rg here we can see the both obturator foramen are visible here both obturator foramen should not be visible so this is as i told this is right sided right oblique and this is left oblique what are the wrong in this film one is both obturator foramen are visible tilting is pelvic tilt is not proper examiner hand is seen so this is a not properly done rgu this is also incorrect rgu see the penis is not at all stretched here so we have we can see the end down appearance here so after penis is properly stretched we can see the picture like this this is same thing penis is not properly stretched here examiner hand is coming here 
so this is this is what i told sir this is right sided right oblique because right hip is seen penis on to the right side this is left oblique left hip is seen penis on to the left side and left after from is not visible these are i am i am stressing these point especially because these are only for pgs so i want them to learn now itself I, because nowhere it is given so much detail we cannot find everywhere this much because in even water in our campbell and other textbooks all these are not given so i have taken many of the things from the standard euro radiology textbook so i request all the pgs to concentrate on this so don't think that you read again and learn so just try to concentrate you will learn very good okay and this is also known as this is improperly done x-ray because i want to ask one question in usmania rg is done by radiologist or by yourself sir in usmania very rarely i did rg sir after coming to yashoda uh, i started doing rg mcu especially for cases oh. where the uh, where the pediatric cases and for cases which uh, uh I mean panurethral suture cases usually we go for uh, rg mcu sir and our technicians they are well trained in, in pj chandigarh rg and mcu is done by urologist all all oh, one oh. one resident is posted there so uh, it is better uh, those who don't do rg this class this class is very very useful yes, okay please proceed and the thing is that guidelines and many standard textbooks are saying, even the radiology textbooks are saying that the rg mcu should be done by urologist only Yes. If not done by urologist, they should be done under the supervision of urologist. Yes. Yes. And because the should... amount of pressure, uh, sometimes I feel that five mL is enough uh, to do the RGU test. Unnecessarily twenty mL injecting veins all will distend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Good. So this is improper done RGU because even though this is improper, but to some extent it is oblique position is given and some stretch is given so that we can able to see the structure here. so this is incorrect because this is totally wrong and rg you done because we can this is almost penis is on to in between the thighs this is first wrong thing second thing is the even his hands are completely exposed both the femur we can see up to the almost up to the level of knees they are seen this all this is totally completely wrongly done rg you here this is also same yeah just by looking at the x ray we can we should tell whether it is correctly done or not what is wrong in it what is right in it that's why i'm stressing all these points so this is uh, also completely wrong rgu uh, the ex examiner has weighed a lead uh, lead gloves but it is exposed so it is wrong there is not at all stitching of the penis completely wrong both obturator foramen are seen this is completely wrong penis is not on the lateral it is completely wrong so this is another example of wrong then what is normal female urethra as we all know the normal female urethra it is 4 cm as we all know but it is directed posteriorly and obliquely the course is like this so and uh, urethra at the during voiding bladder and neck will funnel this is what the normal appearance of uh, uh, urethra female urethra in case of mcug so sometimes during rg or mc uh, during especially during mcug we can see the contrast pooling in the prefuse especially in case of children we should remember this thing especially in case of children when we are doing recurrent uti evaluation and there is no reflex but when we do the study we can see that there is contrast pooling in the prefuse that means the patient is having pathological phimosis so we, yes. we don't we don't think about this prefuse and we morely mostly think about the reflex so this is not correct so we have to concentrate even on the prefuse here so that's why i kept this image so the, these are the important slides the uh, important this what is already i already told what is the landmark for bulbo uh, membranous junction second thing i like to highlight is how will we measure the length of urethra in rgu the length of urethra can be measured in rgu by two ways one is with the help of electronic calibers by means radiologist can measure uh, that is there in mean their packs second thing is we can take this pubic ramus width usually the pubic ramus width is around 2 to 2.5 cm we can have the rough idea we can compare the, the pubic ramus width is like this we can compare if the, the urethra structure is similar to this width of pubic ramus or if it is more than pubic ramus or if it is less than pubic ramus based on that we can have a rough idea whether if it is less than 2 cm more than 2 cm or 2 cm structure this is how we need to ca calculate the length of structure in rgu so regarding some of the physiological uh, impressions which can be felt as pathological so there are three to four uh, uh, impressions which can be seen in rgu which we think of pathological but those are actually physiological among one first one is musculus compressor nude this is nothing but is we can see in this diagram this is musculus compressor nude and here we can see this is muscular compressor nude this is nothing but as already shown you in the first uh, anatomy diagram this is because of bulbospongius muscle fibers 
the fulbar sponges muscle fibers they will have an impression over the proximal bulbar urethra in some cases they will give the appearance similar to like a stricture but these are not stricture then why, what how will you know that this is a pathological uh, stricture or it is a normal constriction because of the musculus compressus nude the simple maneuver is this is because of the com uh, compression or spasm of the bulbar sponges muscle if we give some time to the patient and if we change the patient penis position to this side and that side and if the, if the x ray is done in right position if you do repeat the x ray in the left position many of the times this will disappear that's how we can come to know whether this is physiological or pathological there are other uh, impression is known as incisora intermuscularis which is seen at the level of the verum montanum this is seen at the level of verum montanum which is difficult to see in many of the times but as per the just theory knowledge i'm telling this is incisora intermuscularis is nothing but an impression of smooth muscle that is sphincteric muscle smooth muscle of the bladder neck at the level of prostate and verum montanum it will have an impression this is many of the times whereas as already told in the previous slide muscular compressor nude is an impression at the level of proximal bulbar urethra whereas incisora intermuscularis is an impression at the level of verum montanum whereas other impression which is known as plicae colliculoris this is just distal to the level of verum montanum based on the level of uh, narrowing we can see whether this is physiological or pathological so these three are different uh, constrictions and uh, there is one more physiological thing that is prostatic utricle as we all know this will be seen posterior to the level of verum montanum in many of the cases this is a normal anatomical variant but it may be pathological in some cases this will be seen just as you can see this is just posterior to the verum montanum the other Very thing is in some cases the whole bulbo sponges muscle severe contraction may give the appearance like stricture this is what we can see like a stricture but we should this not this is common that. not very rare ah yes, sir yes sir when you do cystoscopy it will be normal yes it will be normal sir that's the reason i want to know during rg how to differentiate all whether these are physiological or pathological that's what i'm stressing upon sir this is maybe this complete bulbo sponges muscle may cause impression and spasm over the urethra so that it will appear as stricture the solution for this is just give some time repeat the test in the other position this spasm will go and it will be appear normal so there are other physiological things like cobb's collar or murman's ring these are thought to be because of embryological origin usually these are at the level of bulbar urethra mid bulbar urethral level there are different types of cobb's collar we are not concerned about this but i would like to tell you type 1 is just a simple narrowing that means not a severe narrowing type 2 is almost like a stricture type 3 is very pin hole stricture so some people will tell that cobb's collar may represent it is a differential diagnosis for type 3 posterior urethral valve but it is not because posterior urethral valve it will always have an origin from verum montanum whereas this cobb's collar always seen at the level of mid bulbar urethra so i'll repeat cobb's collar at the level of mid bulbar urethra muscular compressor nude at the level of proximal bulbar urethra and incisor intermuscularis at the level of the verum montanum and sorry, sorry what is this cobb's collar Cobb's collar is a congenital remnant, sir. This was thought that it is maybe because of the congenital, it is urogenital membrane remnant. They are thought, and they have thought that maybe it may be a differential diagnosis. It may be because of the type three posterior urethral valve. They thought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Below the membrane is urethra. They will be there. Yeah, they will be there. But the do they do they obstruct normally? Yes, so that's what I'm telling, sir. They are three types. So the type one is it will not obstruct. Just just. type 2 is it will have almost like a narrowing it will be seen like a stricture in this diagram it will be seen like this type 2 type 3 is like it will be obstructing so that it will be a pin hole meatus here pin hole meatus here so type 3 and type 2 are obstructing so how to differentiate based on the level of the urethra we can uh, identify this this is an rgu which is showing type 2 cobb's collar here and this is an rg which is showing type 3 cobb's collar here type 2 cobb's collar here type 3 cobb's collar here so this is summarizing all the physiological impressions which can be seen in rgu which can be we felt like a uh, uh, stricture but these are actually not stricture i made this summarizing all the physiological i made it into a uh, table so that it will be easy for the pgs to remember so i will tell okay. all these just i summarized with this okay then what is the importance of scout film as i already discussed the important anatomical landmarks in the scout film so what is the scout film the important thing is the scout film based on the area of exposure as already told if you are doing an rgu this much is enough if you are doing an mcug the area has to be involved even the kidneys also the scout film of mcug is different from scout film of rgu so what are the structures we usually see in scout film or plain x ray 
here we can see this is all our tuberculous calcifications mesentery calcification which when uh, usually see in case of tb abdomen cases and this is small calcifications like uh, can't, uh, i mean there are small stones linear stones which will be seen in the level of kidney that means maybe because of stones in the calicel diverticulum all these are important because see for suppose if this is not seen and if they are in post viral filling there is some contraction remaining here then we will have a confusion whether it is because of the stone or because of the reflex that is important that's why it is important always to have cover the area of kidney in case of mcg scout filling this is in the images some images regarding pelvic fractures there are different different types of pelvic fractures i will not go into all those detailed details because i already said based on the anatomy of the pelvic fracture we should be able to tell what is the pelvic structure which is got uh, stuck involved so this is here we can see x ray image which is showing pubic diastasis with uh, left to pubic bone has displaced uh, inferiorly and also we can see there is a fracture of the right ala here ala sacrum is fractured the same thing is better seen in case ct scan here this is pubic diastasis and with pubic uh, one minute sir diastasis with pubic diastasis with sacroiliac joint disruption here yeah so this is in uh, plain x ray showing soft tissue shadowing here you can see this is penile shadow which is uh, scrotal shadow and this is fecal impaction and here we can clearly see this is this is what is sacrum so this is here you can see this is sacroiliac joint this is sacrum 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 sacroiliac joint sacroiliac joint and this is sacrum why this is important because in sacral agencies we have to see in those in that area only that's why it is important to see the sacral area which and to identify what is lumbar vertebra where it is ending and where is sacrum is starting and this is plain x ray showing a urethral stent this is memocat stent which uh, we done uh, for, for a case which has already repeated urethroplasty and the patient was having false passage with anastomosis even this type of images can be seen in plain films and there are some foreign bodies see we can see in urethra especially they are for voiding difficulty or for sexual gratification patient will put different different uh, material into his urethra we will we will skip this okay. uh, any mcug mcug interpretation films are there yes sir i'll show you so sir this is one hour, one hour we cross it now sir, okay sir. i'll i'll uh, uh, so uh, ideally how many slides are there because this will be a good record i don't want to push uh, how much time do you think from here it will take around 20 minutes will take sir another 20 minutes yes, sir. okay go ahead uh, because it will be a good uh, record in the youtube that's what i wanted to have sir because so, the topic and uh, 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 let us make it a quick points like that okay because this is post graduate oriented i made it yeah, yeah. I, I understand not only that for pure program also it will be a great document Thank yeah you. go ahead so these are plain i'll i'll make the a little bit faster these are the plain images no, no, no faster plain. you go normally but uh, don't explain too much just tell yes yes sir, yes sir. these are the plain images which are showing seminal vesical calcification and here we can see the vas calcification with the bladder stone this is putty kidney in seen in x ray kb and this is tuberculous prostate here in the plain x ray we can see the prostate like this in tuberculosis and this is water can perineum seen in case of tuberculosis urethra as you done here all this is extravasation this is fecal impaction especially done especially important case of pediatric cases to know bowel bladder dysfunction fecal impaction and this is sacral agents what i already told sacral agents is how you know that the sacrum is not agents is that means one is sacral bone is absent and second one is we have to see the posterior lamina posterior spinous process posterior spinous process seen here 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 it is not seen that means above l5 level it is not seen that means sacrum is not there how to see spina bifida in plain x-ray spina bifida is same basically we have to see the posterior spinous process here posterior spinous process here 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 l5 vertebra for sacral level it is not seen so sacrum is there but the spinous process is not seen that means it is spina bifida so this is classical image of extrophy bladder you can see widely diastasis pubic symphysis and even we can see in plain x ray urethral calculi and we can see some cases over distended bladder in case of atonic bladders vesical calculi we can see of different shapes like jack stones mulberry and fecal impacted stones and the gas in the wall of the bladder is we know that it is emphysematous cystitis whereas gas in the bowel and bladder it is colovesical fistula 
Cystosomias is the bladder is nothing but calcification of bladder wall is seen in cystosomias of the bladder. Phlebolith, many of the times we see phlebolith and we need to differentiate it from the uretric calliculase. What is the point which will differentiate phlebolith from uretric calliculase? Phlebolith will have central radiolucency, whereas uretric stone will not have central radiolucency. This is what the differentiating point between phlebolith and uretric calliculase. Different examples, I already discussed, I'll skip, I'll just tell what is the finding here. Distal, yeah. distal penile structure here. Uh, proximal distal bulbar, bulbar structure here, proximal uh, bulbar structure with false passage, and bulbo urethral gland here with veru montanum seen. And this is bulbo, I mean bulbo penel structure here, and this is intravasation of contrast, intravasation of contrast into the corpus uh, spongiosum, intravasation into the veins. Postanavicular structure here, distal penel structure here. And these are the glands of litter, which I was telling initially. These are periurethral glands, which will be distended in case of obstruction of the level of bulbar urethra. The fracture, I am not going to class, but just know there are different classification systems are available for pelvic fracture urethral injuries. What we commonly use is Goldman's classification. So type of injury I already showed because it may be because of the anterior posterior compression injury, or it may be because of lateral compression injury, or because of fall from a height, or cycling injuries or manhole injuries, as we all already I discussed. So there are different classification systems of pelvic fracture, Mervyn Diles classification, Young Burgess classification, what we commonly use, and there is other classification like toroid classification, in, especially in case of pediatric pelvic fractures. So what is a type one uh, pelvic uh, blood urethral injury? Type one injuries, there will be elongation of bulbar urethra without disruption of the uh, uh, urogenital diaphragm, there is no disruption of urethra. This is just only elongation is type 1 injury. Injury above the level of urogenital diaphragm is type 2. Here you can see injury above the level of urogenital diaphragm. What is type 3? That means injury above and below the level of urogenital diaphragm. This is type 3 injury, below and above. It may be type 3 injury is most commonly seen. It may be associated with bladder injury as well. You can see a bladder injury, extraperitoneal and type 3 injury of urethra. Type 4 injury is urethral bladder neck injury. It may be associated with bladder neck injury or prostatic urethral injury. This is bladder neck injury, type 4 injury. This is type 4 injury, bladder neck and prostatic urethral injury. Type 5 injuries and urethral injuries. That is straddle injuries. Urethral diverticulum, uh, this, this is what uh, during cystoscope it will appear like. This is what the appearance in RGU. This is urethral diverticulum. This is urethral diverticular stones, which urethral diverticulum stones which are seen in plain film. Urethral calicle, which serve as telling. So this is calicle in penel urethra, which can be seen in case of RGU, with alpha because of the stricture here at the level of distal proximal penel urethra. This is contrast intravasation. As we already discussed, intravasation may be seen because of the, when we give forcefully inject, there will be mucosal disruption and the contrast will go into circulation. It will fill corpus spongiosum or it may fill corpus spongiosum corpus spongiosum or corpora cavernosa or it may go, go into the deep venous system or penile venous system. This is what is known as corpus uh, contrast intravasation. So this is bulbar urethral necrosis. This is what we commonly see in case of uh, repeated urethroplasty done for traumatic cases. This is radiation induced structure. What is the clue here? All these are radiation seeds, brachytherapy seeds. This is the clue here. This is radiation induced structure in, involving the proximal bulbar and penile urethra. Proximal bulbar and membranous urethra. This is reflex seen into the vas difference, ejaculatory duct, seminal vesicle, and prostate and prostate depths. This is post ERP structures. How we can say this is post ERP structure because prostatic cavity is seen here. There is one clue. Second clue is because of prostate cavity is seen, there will not be veru we can see, but the normal narrowing of the prostate urethra is not seen here. Penile fracture with urethral injuries, we can see the contrast extravasation into the corporal bodies. And rectourethral fistula, we can during RG, we can see the colon, which is filled up with the contrast. This is what gives the clue regarding rectourethral fistula. And urethrovisional fistula is already told with the help of double lumen catheter, this can be seen. Like one lumen of the catheter will be in the bladder, second will be outside the urethra. So we'll give the contrast, it will delineate the uh, structurous part. Here we can see this is in the bladder, this is outside, this is inside, and this is uh, fistula, and this is vagina. Prostate utricle, as already said, 
so what are the examples of mcug this is what normal mcug looks on full uh, with a good amount of bladder and this is post viral films which is showing mucosal pattern this mucosal pot pattern is normal this is not abnormal and vaginal pooling is also common in especially in pediatric cases vaginal pooling is very common so we should not make it pathological as yes. what are the clues which will tell whether it is physiological pathological that means if there is no clear demarcation between urethra and vagina it is pathological if there is reflex into the distended very much distended vagina then it is pathological that means urogenital sinus bladder ears these are physiological variant these are commonly seen in infants because of the poorly developed inguinal region so but the uh, bladder ears can also be seen pathological they are especially in case of old female with uh, pelvic exenteration pelvic surgery because of the weak pelvic floor these can be seen so vur as we all know uh, i will not go into the classification system of vur as we all know it can be 1 2 3 4 5 5 1 is only into the ureter here we can see type 1 in mcug type 2 ureter and kidneys type 3 with mild to moderate dilatation into the ureter and kidneys type 4 moderate dilatation with the maintaining papillary impression type 5 gross and tortuous ureters with loss of papillary impressions this is arshu kidney with reflex how arshu kidney because it is medially seen calyx is seen here this is triplex on the right side duplex on the left side this is cross fuse ectopia left side is orthotopic right side is heterotopic that means ectopic this is reflex into the ectopic ureter urethroceal the important point during urethroceal what i want to tell is urethros has already told it is better seen in partially filled bladder once we completely fill the bladder either it will prolapse into the urethra or it will disappear or it will avert in this case it is averted here urethroceal it is averted here but urethroceal after distension it is disappeared here so what is then when i am using regarding bladder herniation this is also commonly seen in females so this is partially filled bladder complete filled bladder bladder is herniated here this is cystocele what we commonly see during even uh, avoiding mcug i mean video urodermic study also we can see cystocele this is even during resting you can see the bladder neck is just below the level of pubic symphysis with voiding it will go further beyond with complete voiding patient will not able to void but it is totally prolapsed this is cystocele and we can call, even we can see the fill in defects like this like cystitis cystica we can see hush diverticulum also like this in mcug hush diverticulum it is paraureteric diverticulum and this is as in the common which you kept in exam is this mcug the, that is vesicular vagina fistula the appearance what we see here in ap film is known as cup and saucer appearance what is a cup here what is saucer here cup is vagina saucer is bladder because vagina is vertical it is cup so bladder is transverse so it is uh, what um, it is bladder so it is cup and saucer appearance in vesicular vagina fistula to see vesicular vagina fistula oblique films are mandatory or lateral films are mandatory in this is a mc histogram showing pelvic hematoma pelvis is totally compressed to half or it is surrounded both sides so it is compressed in between regarding posterior urethral valves as we all know there are three types of urethral valves i am not going to details so what is the what are the radiological features of posterior urethral valves which seen on mcug one is shield like urethra posterior urethra this is one second one is grossly dilated urethra number two number 3 is the as if the urethra posterior urethra is hanging on to the anterior urethra this is what as if the posterior urethra is hanging on to anterior urethra this is the third classical feature of posterior urethral valves and there will be gross dilatation with trabeculations reflex all those things can be seen there are even sometimes we can see the anterior urethral valves also bladder injury uh, there are different types of bladder injuries but what we commonly know are two types that is one is whether it is intraperitoneal or extra peritoneal but the bladder injury they are classified as sander classification based on that it is type 1 2 3 4 5 1 one is just only bladder contusion type 2 is extra intra peritoneal injury type 3 is interstitial injury type 4 is extra peritoneal injury type 1 is combined injury so this is intra peritoneal injury how we know because it is contrast is filling the bowel loops this is extra peritoneal injury how we know because it is contrast is outside the bladder so other condition which is known as megalo urethra also we can see in mcug like this gross dilated urethra even this we can see megalo urethra there is of different types urethral duplication we can see double urethra with the only double urethra or with double bladder we can see here we can see the double urethra here we can see the double bladder also 
there are some urethral anomalies seen like urethral sinus urethral diverticulum even bph also we can see histogram if you do it properly the filling defect which is seen here is a median lobe prostate the same thing we can see even during our fluoroscopic study also prune belly syndrome as we all know the characteristic feature prune belly is abdominal wall defect and there is some of the features which are characteristic of prune belly syndrome even on mcug that is grossly distended bladder grossly distended bladder neck grossly reflexed ureter and the abdominal wall laxity these are the features which are important for prune belly syndrome the female urethral diverticulum how we know female urethral diverticulum so in oblique films with the help of mcug or with the help of double lumen catheter the contrast which is going towards off the midline that is contrast which is going off the midline is always because of urethral diverticulum and we can see even the bladder diverticulum like this in oblique films this is normal bladder this is one diverticulum this is second diverticulum this is christmas tree appearance of the bladder especially in case seen in case of neurogenic bladders in video urodynamic studies also mcg has a role here we can see when the voiding even the when the pressures are raised then also bladder neck is not opening this is because of primary bladder neck obstruction this is because of dysfunction voider during voiding we can see sphincter is raised here you can same thing we can see here sphincter is stone is raised here uh, sphincter uh, contraction we can see here that means it is a dysfunctional voider patient this is dsd cases how we used to see in previous days during histogram phases during voiding this is the bulbar this is level of sphincter this is contracted this is relaxed that's how we should differentiate we should know whether it is dsd or not but usually we with the help of urodynamics we are doing we are not using this nowadays even after radical prostrectomy if you want to see the urine leak we can see like this in histography or mcug so what are the guidelines which are saying so combined and mcug and rgu are especially important in cases of obliterative strictures posterior urethral stenosis and pelvic fracture urethral injuries perform mcug in cases of female who is having recurrent urinary tract infection perform validated urethrography after urethroplasty to assess for extra visitation during prior to removal the sport sir you told no so they mentioned yeah. the strong recommendation just prior to catheter removal they wanted to do the peri catheter rgu i don't know many people will not do but it is given as a strong recommendation 2021 guidelines so even during diagnostic evaluation they said that rgu plus mcu mcu is important for making investigating the urethra and the take home message here is what to see in rgu and mcg during examination especially for post graduate cr so as already discussed i'll summarize uh, this is nothing but summarization of what i told so we should see what, how, what is the preparation of the film what is the exposure how the bowels are prepared what are the is there any bony fractures are there or not bony anomalies are there there or not spine anomalies we have to see and sacrum we have to see and we have to see for kidney stones and we have to see for especially in oblique films you have to see whether pate is properly done Obstructive foramen is seen or not? Fossa angularis is seen or not? Penile urethra, all the example which I have shown, we have to see all these things. This is just summarization of my talk. What we have to see in, especially in case of MCU gen RGU. During filling and during voiding, I have explained everything in detail regarding each point in each with each. One doubt: the posterior urethral wall after fulguration, if you do MCU gen. Uh, how it looks like does the posterior urethra dilatation disappear so this based on the uh, and the duration of obstruction sir it may not disappear completely if it's a long standing uh, obstruction it may not disappear completely sir so does it have any relevance in the post operative period uh, posterior urethral wall follow up <laughs> if the patient is voiding freely if there is a contra during mcu if the contrast is not obstructed if there is not much we have to compare with the pre pre operative film and post operative film so based on that if the contrast is freely coming anterior into the anterior urethra if the patient is symptom free creatinine is maintained patient is fine without any infections that's how it will give the clue sir even with the mcu sometimes it is difficult to see the uh, valves even during pre operatively also it's not always easy to see the valves on rg and mcu then uh, in children uh, what is the area where nuclear voiding cystourethrogram uh, is useful when compared to uh, traditional uh, because radiation is a major concern yes, so especially and the two testicles uh, invariably get radiated in this film yes, sir yes sir yes sir for for mcug i told you all at around 8 to 10 films we required so it is a very huge amount of radiation to the child so what many people will do is they do uh, mcug or radionuclear cystography mostly they do mcug for diagnosis and for surgery 
After surgery for follow-up, they will keep radionuclide cystography as for follow-up study. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. So, so radionuclide cystography can tell about reflux and uh, some amount of urethra also. Yes, sir. It will tell about the reflex, but it will not tell about the posterior urethra and the urethral integrity and bladder neck status. Only post-void recidival urine and reflux it can tell. Reflex it will tell and bladder pathology it will tell, but it will not tell about the urethra. So in follow-up cases, urophlometry and patient satisfaction IPS score are very important, na? Yes, sir. In case of RG. And even in children also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If they don't complain, uh, you can wait and watch. If the stream is very distant and post-void is less, sir. Uh, uh, then we can, we can, I mean, particularly posterior urethral wall, I am asking because that is one annoying uh, uh, clinical problem where we need follow up stringently lifelong. That is the problem. Yes, sir. But uh, MCUG, uh, that's what I'm telling you, sir. Even MCUG will not, uh, uh, it will tell the. Yeah, yeah. I got the point. I got the point. So, patient voiding uh, post void recital in stream urophlometry may be better clue than repeatedly doing MCUG. Yes, sir. That's what important, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. And okay. to conclude my study, I mean, I mean, talk. The most important thing is the RGU and MCUG should always be done by urologist, or it should be done under supervision of urologist, and it should be interpreted by urologist. We should not rely on diagnosis or findings or report of radiologist. That is number one point. Be a part of RGU MCUG and don't blame your radiologist or technician for the improperly done procedure. Third point: Pas proper patient position is important to have a good result and good uh, outcome. So reducing radiation dose is most important thing, especially in case of children. As we have to, sir, as sir already told, we have to uh, think about the patient testes also. Thank you very much, sir. Even it, thank you. It's lengthy, but uh, as because it is. A yeah, yeah, no, no, it is a good documentation for your kind information. Sir. If I am not exaggerating, sir. you know the number of audience the program has seen. No, sir. Only one surgeon, uh, two, I think, Oliver Traxer, sir. And uh, Ravindra Sabni sir have crossed uh, 400. You have reached 380. Okay, okay, thank you. If you speak another 10 minutes, you will cross that. <laughs> I, I really appreciate the effort you have put more than my expectation. Even I am listening. Sometimes uh, I, I skip, but uh, I am listening except that cobble some web I missed there and then came back. Uh, I really appreciate and uh, uh, the enthusiasm you have shown for preparation. Almost, I must tell you, this will be forever uh, RGU MCUG for the, especially this uh, so, sodium and uh, other uh, ions, uh, how they cause bronchospasm and uh, brain. There are uh, two minor details, but they are very important. After a long time, I also got uh, refreshed. Uh, to be honest, in pure program, I am the most beneficiary because I will be listening compulsory and I have to interact. Thank you, Seish Mohan. For all the audience, uh, thank you once again being with us. In fact, uh, upcoming week, uh, Dr. Makarand Kochikar sir and uh, uh, Thulium Fiber Laser, as a matter of fact, Oliver Traxer sir accepted for one more talk on where are we at lasers and uh, as my previous announcement, next month, 6th Sunday, we are doing live operative workshop uh, of supine versus prone PCNL. You can come on Saturday evening and have gala dinner also. Uh, importantly, we wanted to demonstrate four cases of supine PCNL, four cases of prone PCNL. Uh, preferably, we are we want to avoid uh, PowerPoint presentations, only surgeries. Uh, we will rotate three theaters. Those who cannot come before the day, you can come in the morning, uh, five o'clock flight and reach here by uh, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. We will start after eight and we will end by six. After that, you can catch your uh, flight again. Uh, please utilize the opportunity. The senior faculty are Dr. Madhusudan Agarwal, Dr. Sabni sir, Dr. S.K. Paul and so on. Dr. Aditya Sharma, uh, Dr. Janak Deshai sir, particularly ultra mini pair can be demonstrated. Various types of nephroscopes also we can uh, show and various type of energy sources also we can show. So for the contact details, uh, you can contact me or Mr. Rajender who is taking care. Already we have uh, done the flyers, so you can use them. Thank you once again being with us. Use audience 380. Thank you, sir. There are certain doubts. Uh, three questions. Can RGU be standing position from uh, uh, Devashish uh, De? Standing position can we do RGU? Yeah, we, can, we can do, sir. But the thing is, uh, first thing is, uh, the, our target here in RGU is to just to see the uh, urethra. So, no, you cannot do then. Normally, you should not do. 
So we should not do because yes, cut up. No, 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 no need to explain because it falls straight on to it. It's a vertical film. There is no obliquity. A uh, lot of people do that. You have shown two films how straight they are. So Balbari Yatra gone. It looks like a dot. Yes, sir. End on, end on. Balbari Yatra is end on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah. Uh, Akshay Patel, how does uh, bladder neck uh, hypertrophy appears on MCUG in post urethral wall case? Bladder neck hypertrophy is asking. So it, is, it will almost appear like a slit. It will like uh, what we, it will like uh, constricting type, it will go in, especially in case of post urethral valves because of the chronic uh, hypertrophy and uh, hypertrophy changes. We can see it will appear like both the leaflets which are approximating. Yeah, Renick will appear as constricted and it will appear like a leaflet appearance in case of postural valve and MCUG. Very good answer. Sridhar uh, Dubeti has asked who, what is the correct position of RGU, left oblique or right oblique? You already mentioned he came late, so it is uh, uh, right side oblique. So, right side oblique, why, why it is right side oblique means X ray will be coming from the left side of the patient. That is Most of the times, side. yes. It is from left side, so it is better to stand on the right side. So, yeah. if the X ray is beam on right side, we can stand on the left side also, anything is okay. Uh, do you think the X-ray technician or urologist, uh, apart from wearing the lead apron, should we stand apart and should we wear the all other uh, thyroid shield? Last question. Yes, sir. It's better always to have those because but every day if we are doing so many X-rays, it will happen to us. Yes, sir. The thing is, uh, if we are three feet three feet away from the radiation uh, source, then uh, the radiation exposure is very less. Uh, Foley catheter is better then. Yes, sir. It is always better. That's why I told you with the advantage of police catheter is we, we, with the help of police catheter. We yeah, have... you can go away from the X-ray machine and do it. Okay. That is a very important point. Exposure is not the radiation exposure also less to the surgeon or ex uh, examiner who is doing it. Because uh, every day if over enthusiastic, if you are doing too many X-rays, especially busy unit, usually X-ray technicians will be trained. Uh, urologists will not go. A, a good te trained te technician is better than very untrained, uh, I mean, other professional doctor. Uh, if he has not done any time, he may inject very fast and all the veins may be seen. Uh, one last, uh, sorry, antibiotic uh, prof you have told, now already mentioned. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So, antibiotic prophylaxis, uh, one thing is whether if you want to do RG, MCUG, culture is mandatory, it should be sterile. That is one thing. Yeah. If you want to give during procedure, one dose we can give. Especially yeah. in case of MCUG, many of the children will be already on antibiotic prophylaxis. Very good. If required, we can double the dose or we can continue the same dose of antibiotic in case of MCUG. Very good. Thank you, Seshuman. Excellent session. One of the memorable session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'd like to thank the audience, especially for their patient listening. And I request all the postgraduates to utilize this talk. And a special thanks for Chandramon, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir.